<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. We are ready to have a great time. How you doing today, ABB? I am doing great. I feel like I played some disc golf this week and I feel like I'm back. I feel like I oh, escaped the bottom third. I, I escaped it. So I had a solid yeah. round. You know, don't don't um, underestimate just good shot selection and not trying to kill the disc and just playing for par and get a birdie if you can get one because it tends to work out. Dude, amen. Amen. I mean, I I was playing... I was playing some League of Legends, uh, you know, okay. your old stomping grounds. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting on I'm waiting on that time. I realize, you know, you've got you've got a whole kid situation going on right now. Three but of I them, told yeah. Silas about it when I was up there. I was like, Sai Guy, I know Fortnite's not working for you right now. I gotta get you and Brad to hop on the league train with me mm-hmm. and come back. Uh yeah. That's a that's a toxic train for me. That that, that game uh, caused me a lot of heartache and anger that I just don't want back in my life. But it would be fun. To, with with friends with friends yeah with as friends. long as you have five friends with you it's mm-hmm. super fun yeah it does get toxic when you add in random strangers that you think do these people have fingers uh, yeah right are they are they playing without fingers right now maybe that's what it is and i'll just believe in it mm-hmm. um but anyways i was playing with some i was playing league with some random people uh and or I was actually playing with friends uh, in the birdie fam and they, we were just talking shot selection, things like that. Um, and I hit him again with the, like, if you can throw 250 feet with some accuracy mm-hmm. and just make 20 foot putts, that's 900 rated golf. Like if mm-hmm. you can do those two things and you are not playing 900 rated golf, decision-making is mm-hmm. 100% holding you back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we played Timbrook for our weekly. Number one, I found someone generously turned in a beat-in Electron Envy into the used bin that has perfectly replaced the one I lost like months ago. Ooh. And I, I narrowed it down. I narrowed down some like bag and shot selection so I'm not confused and I have some like subconscious confidence. And I went eight under there at Timbrook and I got, that's with two bogeys and I didn't get the two easiest birdies on the course. So still... There's still some room to grow. There's still some room to grow, but I did feel good with my putting. I've spent a little bit of time and I kind of applied an old like archery technique about like more of like instinctual like feel versus like really thinking about, okay, well, here's like I'm aiming at this chain and I need to make sure I come down this far. I need to touch the inside of my thigh before I come up. I need to make sure I kick my back leg out. I'm just like, all right, I'm I'm just focused on anything, anything inside of 25 feet. I'm just making sure that I like shake hands with the basket and I'm pointing direct at the basket and it helped. It helped a lot. So, Dude. Hey, if this goes out to everybody out there, if you've had a rough couple of months of disc golf and you're like, I want to give up, I'm caught in the quicksand of just can't get out of these terrible rounds. You will come out of it. Just, and Absolutely. also I will say this too. I went out and I was like, I'm just going to like enjoy playing today. And if I have a bad hole, I'm still playing disc golf. It's still fun. Mindset helps, and I I will take the stance that putting is very mental. For me, my dry my tee shots are like extremely like mental dependent. Like if I have a good attitude about it, I pretty much throw a good shot. If I have a bad attitude about it, I'm gonna throw a bad shot, or I'm down from the last hole or whatever. You know, yeah. no like revolutionary like thought process here, but just from someone who's really tr- trying to play and actually trying to get better. That's just stuff I'm trying to focus on at the moment. Okay, hey, that's your uh. Breaking Brad update for, for I, this week. I'm here for it, man. I'm here for it. Yeah, that's you talk about like eight down, but missed the two easiest birdies. Had uh, you know, two bogeys out there. I think like as a uh, what's happening in the Robbie C like universe, we had to keep it a thousand this week, uh, and mm-hmm. so we achieved it at a pitch and putt type course. Yeah. And when people looked at it the first time, they were like, "Oh, this looks so easy. This course is so simple." And it's like, I'm I'm not trying to disagree with you. I am not trying to say that this is the hardest course in the world. I would never look at Peaky Shorts and say, "Oh, this is the hardest course in the world." Mm-hmm. Is every hole birdieable at Peaks View Shorts? Pretty much. All except maybe hole 17, easily birdieable. Uh, mm-hmm. The rest of them, yeah. So uh, the thing is, though, 
is that most people can conceptually see, oh yeah, I can see burning all these holes. Mm -hmm. But what you're not anticipating is actually burning all of them in the same round. Yeah. Because when you've hit five birdies in a row and then all of a sudden you have a 25 footer, that 25 footer, depending on if you're a pro, mm -hmm. you're like, I'm just in the zone. I'm boom. I'm putting it easy. But if you're not a pro, it's really hard to not let those birdies build up and like, oh, I'm actually like having a pretty decent round here. Mm -hmm. And the pressure weighs on and all of a sudden it's like, all right, cool. Or in a situation that you were in, Brad, of like you on one of the, probably the easiest hole uh, of the course, mm -hmm. you were playing for the win that day because you were playing tax. Yep. So you didn't even run the putt. No, nope. uh, I laid like, up. And I made the second one. I just tried it to see if I could make it and I made it. Yeah. And so it's like, well, was it the right decision to lay up? Should you have just kept your foot on the gas? Like, should you have done that? And that's that's the debate. That's the beautiful part about strategy in disc golf is you also can't look at a scorecard and go like, oh, that was the whole story. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, there's, so. there's more to it. But yeah, I think there's, again, a lot of a lot of room to grow for sure. And speaking of growth, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing an in the bag first. We are 93 episodes in. And when we were talking about this, we realized we've never talked about my bag. Uh, True. We've done a couple episodes of Brad's bag. We've got Breaking Brad happening this year. Uh, we've obviously had quite a few of you on uh, talking about your bag, mm -hmm. but we've never actually dove into my bag. Uh, and so while it's there in Disc RPM, I think that's one of the cool features of Disc RPM community is that Brad and I's bags are there. Uh, and we wanted to try to do our part to make sure that it stays updated, that you guys can see what's actually in the bag and whatnot, mm -hmm. which is another fun thing. Like I was telling Brad off camera, I'm going to drop it in the bag on my channel here soon. But funny because anyone who is in the, like our disc RPM community, you're just going to know what's already in there. Mm -hmm. All you're going to hear is like, here's what I actually use them for. Here's how I do that. Right. Um, so we wanted to give like a little sneak preview to the audience, but also bring you in on a problem that I am having right now. And that is, I am suddenly, not suddenly, it's not been sudden at all. <laughs> it's been a very, very long process, but power is hitting more so than ever before inside of my form. And so I want to address a problem that I think lots of folks will say about a disc and then walk through here's how certain things are flying for me. How should we adjust and kind of walking through with Brad on like what, what options should I consider? Cause there is really my fairways are the most confusing part of my bag right now. And I'm just trying to figure out what I need to do, uh, in that area. So, uh, here's the problem that I want to start with, Brad. This disc is too flippy for me. Okay. How many times have we heard that not only on in the bag, but like you've worked the retail store several times, uh, more than you can probably count at this point. Mm -hmm. How many times do people come in and you're like, Hey, can I like, what can I help with? What are you looking for? Oh yeah. I throw this strike, but it's just too flippy for me. Mm -hmm. You hear that often? Yeah. I usually work the retail store on Wednesdays. Um, and I'm thinking of last Wednesday, I think I heard it three or four times. Yeah. I like, I'll work our local retail shop from two to five today. And I know someone's going to walk in. And I'm going to be like, Hey, welcome. Are you looking for anything? Are you looking for anything specific today? Or are you just kind of browsing? And they'll be like, Oh yeah, no, I'm looking for, I'm looking, I'm having a hard time with this disc. And so I expect to hear in a three hour period, I expect to hear it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and let's be real. I've said it before. Yeah. I'm sure you said it as well, Brad. Like yep. we look at a disc and we're like, it's too flippy. And the example that I always like to go to is Garrett Gerthy, who throws farther than any of you. And I think that's, I'm okay making that statement. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say you, I mean me, I mean Brad, and I mean you as a listener. Yeah. If you throw farther than 600 something feet and you're listening to this podcast, Please leave a review and let us know. Uh, yeah. like, I we have would, a lot of questions for you. I would love 
to know that there are people throwing over 600 feet that are listening to this podcast. So mm-hmm. I welcome. Glad you're here. I highly doubt it, but I would love to know that. Um, but Garrett Gerthy bags a Wombat 3. That's true. And I have met people before that are going to tell me a Wombat 3 is too flippy for them. So how do we balance a world of there should be no disc in the world that is, quote, too flippy unless you're using it for the wrong shots? Yeah. That's Brad, a, have, you thrown a, have you thrown a Rolo? Yeah, it's fun. It's, it is flippy. I mean, even for me, it's flippy. Um, yeah, but I think those type of discs, I was going to say the same thing. It's like they may be very flippy discs and maybe they don't fit your game or like what your particular shot time type is or like game is, but it's not too flippy for you. You just maybe don't have the utility for it. Yeah. Or maybe your, your course isn't asking for the shots Mm -hmm. that you are throwing that on, or it's a realization that I, to throw this disc, I can't throw it full power. Mm -hmm. If I step up with a Rolo and I try to throw my Rolo, like I'm going to throw one of my Raiders, bad things are going to happen. Mm hmm. Or maybe not bad things, but it's going to roll like it's going to do its thing. And I just have to understand, I can't, I cannot throw that. I can't throw my polecat the same way that I can throw my picks. Mm -hmm. Like if you were to put precious child and my polecat side by side and be like, okay, what do these do differently? When thrown at a moderate power, they do absolutely nothing differently. Mm-hmm. Like their flight is the exact same, but when thrown full power, my pole cat unusable, mm-hmm. like it just burns over. Uh Oh, but you know, the cool part is it's not too flippy for me. Right. A crazy concept here, Brad. What if I just don't throw it full power? Mm-hmm. Well, that's, and it's funny that you mentioned this concept because I kind of, I think this is what made me like, maybe play better golf this week is I was Mm. not trying to kill everything. I wasn't trying to like, I didn't like set a power and like throw everything that power. And for me, I love the uplink, but for even for me, not throwing super far or super powerful, like the uplink can be unusable if you try to throw it full power. And, you know, I actually use the uplink several times again and just kind of smoothed it out, put it on enough hyzer. I knew like how much it was going to flip up and turn and use that to my advantage. And, I had more control. I was hitting gaps because I wasn't trying to like rip something. I could actually have some finesse. So yeah, Yeah. definitely. I I feel that. And yeah, uplink, if I throw it at, uh, you know, 90% power, it's going to just turn over and burn. But if I throw it at 50, it's, it has a ton of glide and it has like this nice smooth flip up and turn, which is a good shot to have. Yeah. Like I, so in Vlogmas, I shot a video with, uh, the swanky guys. Mm -hmm. We would, we did like a little go to the store, a budget challenge. And I walked straight to the use section, grabbed a used putter. Uh, it was a wizard. Uh, Mm -hmm. and then I walked over and grabbed a brand new star Rolo and was like, I am going to win this round. Mm -hmm. Uh, like easy with this Rolo. Uh, and the Rolo ended up going into my bag. And there are moments where, yeah, you get to use it and it is okay. Like I want, I have a standstill shot. I'm pinched off in the woods and I don't have access to full power. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful disc to have. And yeah, the uplink shining there, like Tim Brook, especially, I feel like even you get to the back nine, you just end up in so many, or even the middle nine, I guess is probably the better way to put Mm -hmm. it. Like there's so many weird kicks and lies that you can end up grabbing that that half power uplink shot Mm -hmm. is the throw. Well, for those of you that are familiar with hole three on Tim Brook, that's my shot of choice now because I'd rather just throw a nice, easy shot, flip it up and like turn into the gap and hit the, I aim for the, the actual fairway, the ground and it skips up into there. And even if I get like a little too much flip, it's still skipping me. I was still within like 20 feet of the basket i had some trees to get around i got a par but um it's better than being outside the gap and trying to do a weird any choppy forehand or like a thumber through the trees um yeah there's just it gives you like a little bit more 
options like to your point for and you know the the power down thing because i can't if i'm 50 feet from the basket and like my disc requires me to throw a full power to get the flight that i want out of it there's no way that's going to happen yeah so this this conversation about flippiness is i as power continues to grow in your game you're going to find discs that originally did blank for you that now do blah for you Mm -hmm. uh whatever that may be so i've been looking at my bag lately and i have shifted some things around so if you have been if you're one of those people and you've been seeing my bag i guarantee you coming into this episode it looks different Mm -hmm. because i have changed some things around added some discs i've been tinkering around this is going to be pretty close i thought was going to be pretty close i guess is the better way to put it Uh, but a couple weeks ago i went and filmed a video i am trying to season in an origin for my mom Mm -hmm. because i think that the origin is just such a beautiful disc for anyone to be able to throw and we know that the top top pros in kyle klein they like he bags an origin yep so we know it's usable for most people but there are people that are going to look at it and be like oh yeah an origin too flippy for me Mm -hmm. let's put it in the right context things like that so I go to throw this origin. I'm throwing, it's basically a one disc round with this origin and I throw it and I watch on this 330 foot hole as it stands up, goes to flat, turns all the way over and probably moves 180 feet left to right. Uh, like, I mean, I was, I went from throwing down the middle of one fairway to these holes like sit adjacent to one another Mm -hmm. i threw from the middle of the fairway on the left to i landed on the left side of the other fairway coming back Mm. wow and i thought okay if you've watched foundation content if you've watched my content you know i'm in a grip lock phase uh (laughs) and that's not a i'm not trying to pick a side on grip lock versus tour life, but I'm in a grip lock face. Uh, and so mm-hmm. I am full sending things to the right. And I thought you dummy, you have grip locked that so hard all the way over there. What are you doing? So then I grab my overstable glow wizard and I go throw it again. And sure enough, same result. And I thought, okay, the wizard is way more, that wizard is way more overstable. Uh, I modified it to be a two, three, zero, three, because I think it is, it's beef, Mm -hmm. but it burns all the way over. And I was like, yeah, that's what you did. You grip locked it. But the beautiful part about doing YouTube content for a living is all filmed. So I was like, let's check the tape, baby. Mm -hmm. So I go and I look and sure enough on the wizard, exactly that happened. Like my release point is literally across my chest. My chest is fully turned towards the fairway and it is hard grip lock to the right. And I was like, okay, well confirmed. I don't even need to check this origin, but you know what? For comedy's sake, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So I do that and I send it to my coach and I said, looking at this release point, because like looking at it, what do you think happens to this disc? And they were like, oh, it flips up, rides beautifully. Great shot. I said, psych, it actually stands <laughs> up and turns all the way over because my chest was in the right position. My hand was in the right position. I hit this disc with so much power that it just stood up and it turned all the way over. Now, where does that? So now I'm like questioning, okay, what do I want to do? And so you have a disc like the Rolo that is that easy, understable utility. But mm-hmm. the origin, we all know, can beat in quickly and become a very easy, understable option. So I already know that once the origin gets flippy enough, which shouldn't take that long, the Rolo will come out. Mm-hmm. But preface, do I ever think that an origin can get, that a Neo origin can get as flippy as a Rolo? No. Right. I will just go ahead and say that. And like... I think that is an issue, Brad, that people come into quite often. I don't know if you agree, is it's 
when we move discs around in the bag, it's not that we're trying to replace that shot exactly. It's the options and opportunity that that shot gives us that we should be looking to replace. Yeah, for sure. And I think we've kind of talked about this on a previous episode or two, like highlighted it briefly. I think that's where, you know, we never want to recommend a disc that does like one thing for somebody because we want to give like the shot options a disc can give. And um, especially with like beating in discs, I think it's a dangerous trap to fall into as well. Cause you're, to your point about this origin, maybe this origin is like a unique origin. Maybe, you know, the uplink I have is a unique uplink. Maybe not all of them may be the same when you grab them off the shelf. So you have to be willing to say, okay, it's a shot types that I need, not the disc particular that I need. Um, so no, I think it's like, like that's some good wisdom on that. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, there are base plastic origins that can get pretty flippy, but still the Rolo to me almost feels like a fairway. Yeah. Also. So it has a different hand feel. Uh, it's maybe a little bit more roller friendly too versus like an origin or something like that. So they are very different. So if you are looking for a origin that fly, flies like a Rolo or a Rolo that flies like an origin, maybe consider finding either one of those discs and getting them to the spot that you want to. Or that's why used bin shopping is great. I love our used bin section. It's so fun because like I said, this that envy that I had, I know what I needed and two options were going to happen. I had to like get an electron envy and beat it into that point, which I'm a dad of three right now. I don't have a, as much time to play disc golf as I need to, to beat that in. But yeah, someone did it for me. I knew exactly what I needed and it was a very specific group of shots that I needed. I couldn't really, I was trying, I was struggling to find it. So I think looking for the shots are a way more wise, like way to look at this than looking for the disc. Yeah. And like, there are there are utility discs like a Rolo that I'm only going to like it's it is a nice safety blanket at mm -hmm. times of I know that I'm not like I couldn't tell you in the last three weeks the last time that I used the Rolo mm -hmm. during an actual round. Um, I filmed a lot of rounds with my back and I cannot tell you when I have used a Rolo last. I know that next weekend uh, we've got Birdie Fam coming into town, mm -hmm. and I'm playing a lot of doubles that weekend. I'm going to use that Rolo so many times; uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be amazing. I've got a 250 foot island, and if my partner throws a decent shot, I'm 100 percent going to try to park the island with the Rolo because mm -hmm. why not? That'd be incredible. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, but like, other than the memes, I'm not going to it very often. So I got to ask myself if I got rid of the Rolo and replaced it with a somewhat seasoned origin, would I go to that seasoned origin more often because it presents more shot opportunity? And I'd be willing to bet the answer is going to be, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, because even when I look at the top end of my bag, which I'll go ahead and jump over, because I'm, I'm really not... The top end of my bag, uh, it should be on the screen for you guys to see. Brad and I were talking about it. It looks like there is a chasm Mm -hmm. in terms of my drivers <laughs> because yeah. the Raiders are listed at 13.5 minus 0.53. First off, all except for that Fusion Raider with the Renegon die, I would mm -hmm. say close to those numbers. The yeah. other two, absolutely not. Uh, like they are not a 0-3 fade mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, and the Strive, I've got the Strive from the Royal Box in there. Um, I'm bummed because I shot a video with that Royal box and then I messed up the audio and I didn't even send like Silas has never even seen that video because I realized I messed up the audio and I filmed a whole video like uh, with my honest reactions mm -hmm. to the discs. Well, can't film that again because I, yeah. I already know how they work. Um, yeah. But the strive surprised me. I think it's coming out in March. You guys as cool as the brave is and the brave is amazing. I think the strive is even better personally it's great um so i have that strive in there but originally i had a sale mm -hmm. in there and i've used that sale a good bit like probably one of my proudest shots that i've ever thrown in lynchburg was with a sale and it was a good enough shot that multiple people there that round looked at it like do i need to put a sale in my back 
Uh, mm-hmm. Like it was, it was a fun shot and I was able to use it a lot, but I can use the strive to do very similar things that I can the sale while also having more shot opportunity. So mm-hmm. like, while it looks very congested up there and while it looks like I'm missing something, the strive can accomplish what the sale could mostly while also giving other shot opportunities. Mm-hmm. So I'm a big fan of that personally. I know Brad, like you said, we talked about it. Um, is there any disc that you've had in your bag, Brad, before I dive in? Cause I realized this episode, I'm going to be talking a lot. So, mm-hmm. uh, are there discs in your bag that have been like, Oh, I had this, it was super utility and you have since pulled it out to put something else in that gives you something close, but other options. Yeah. I mean, I, I really think that envy is a good example. Cause I had the shaman, the Connor shaman in there, which I really like, but I really didn't. Number one, I'm just not super familiar with it. So I had some like learning to do with it, but it also gave me this like kind of very like narrow shot type where I wasn't going to something basically let's just say the whole putter situation because i or throwing putter because i had like a new cosmic electron envy and then i had the shaman and then i had the inner core as kind of like the pairing and it was always like okay do i go to the shaman or inner core here okay the shaman i kind of almost throw more like a mid than a putter anyway but if i want that shot i'm going to throw the origin not the shaman mm. and then the electron envy was like overstable but not as overstable as i wanted it to be like my eclipse envy but i took that out because of for whatever reason it was slipping out of my hand this winter so i kind of had like this the throwing putter in my bag i'm usually really confident with and i had no confidence and like the shaman and the inner core unfortunately were just like such unique like shot windows that mm. i was just wait i was like taking up spots in my bag that i weren't like going i wasn't going to and it's causing me to go to like discs that were the wrong shot for whatever reason that beat in electron envy gave me like a lot of confidence because it's just it's just it'll flip up and go straight but won't turn right now and has a little bit of fade and then that allowed me to put the um prism proton like eagle envy in there which i love it has like that nice over stability but has a lot of glide even compared to like an eclipse envy mm. so like i had those two shots and then um it really allowed me to like not have any shot confusion at all um, so, and then really the other distance in danger right now is the peppermint, to be honest with you. Really? It's like that, like really overstable, like approach. And yeah. I really have it in there for like, just the, like those choppy forehand lines that I need or something like spike hyzer, but approach wise, but I really don't find myself in that situation a ton. And again, I feel like I'm like, cause I, I'm, I'm, I, I might eat my words at some point this year, but. I'm not going to be a guy that carries like 30 discs. Like that's not who I want to be. Yeah. So, so I really want everything to fit in my pioneer. And I feel like if it doesn't fit in there, I'm like shoving extra discs and other stuff that needs to come out. Cause I don't, I don't need to carry that many discs, but where I'm really feeling like that peppermint is like, it's so niche for me again, with how overstable it is, it has to be a very specific scenario. Now that may be something different for someone with a massive forehand or like massive power. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely in danger. Uh, as far as other ones, I mean, I've had a series of drivers and like overstable fairways or control or distance or control drivers. I've just come in and out because again, they're like very specific scenarios. And I'm testing one out now, which is the Falcon from Millennium. I'm just trying to test it out. Um, but yeah, not to get on the tangent there, but really the the Shaman, unfortunately, and the Inner Core were both those discs that I really love both of them, but they're so like niche shot wise that they came out and i i'll again credit that for how well i played the other day because i was very confident i was throwing i threw both of those envies the uh proton envy and the that beat up electron envy more than i threw any other disc mm. i just tore it up and also you know hole 16 at timber for example the one that's like right on the edge of the hill before the slope of death um Typically, I'll throw a vulture really wide and have it like a uh, flare skip up to the basket, and it works like 60% of the time. Other 40%, I'm either too far away or over the hill. Yeah. And I just have the confidence. I'm like, okay, I know what this envy is going to do. I can just pump it out there. It'll go straight and have, and it'll mm. sit nicely. And I was within like eight feet of the yeah. basket. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely definite discs that have come in and out. And I, 
again, as I'm trying to get better and trying to be more competitive, it's happening less because I'm trying to like really stick to some stuff. Yeah. But yeah. And I think for you too, Robbie, like your is your, well, you have a better forehand than me and I, you can throw stuff a little more of a stable, but you have like, a, for those of you, and I want to, I do want to point this out. I know not everyone's a visual watcher of this podcast and someone even commented on our Instagram. So we're trying our best to like describe and what's going yeah. on on screen to everybody. So in Robbie's bag, we're talking about mid ranges. He has a Rolo all the way on the right side. That's very understable. Then you kind of have that good solid mid where you have like your origin. That's like a little flippy. And then like your reactors, that one's like more straight. One's a little more overstable. Uh, and then you have your justice all the way on the other end, which yeah. your justice if I was comparing to something in my bag, it's probably more like my quake, but I'm, the justice is definitely more overstable than the quake. Um, yeah. Is it more utility for you justice wise, or are you leaning on that a lot? Yeah. Uh, I would say it's definitely utility for okay. sure. Um, so I, because with pigs, I like having part of why I end up cycling pigs as often as I do. Um, because I have definitely seen some pushback from the community on like, you have too many pigs. All right. And this man has 60 pigs in his collection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once again, reminder, everybody, yes, I have 60 pigs, but I'll explain how often I need to recycle them here in a second, but also know that I give more pigs away than I do any other Frisbee mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. Uh, like, there was a time where I I gave away my overstable like throwing pig. Literally, I'd put one in the bag, I would play around with it, and then I would meet someone at the end of that round, and mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh, dude, you know, Robbie, you always talk about pigs. I've never tried one before. And I would be like, okay, <laughs> here you go. Uh, and I would just pull that pig out of the bag and hand it to him. Um, because it's there. Uh, someone bought a bag from me the other day and they were like, I wouldn't be sad if, uh, my first pig was in that bag. So what did I do? I just mm -hmm. reached into my pig box, literally pulled one out, threw it in there. So I love giving away pigs. Um, so that 60 stays pretty constant because I also get an influx of new pigs as mm -hmm. well. So it, it, you know, it, it refreshes itself. But for me, if I'm throwing, like I can throw a pig on a forehand, Part of why I love the pig is because I had the AVRX3 in the bag and mm -hmm. I found it 250 feet on a forehand or beyond, which actually shocks me because Germ has a better forehand than me, I would assume. And uh, he bags AVRX3s. Mm -hmm. So I, I've now met Germ in person twice. The third time's the charm is where I'm going to ask, like, how far do you trust your AVRX3s to actually fade? Because for me, after 250 feet, they stopped fading. Mm -hmm. They just went dead straight. If you gave it enough power to get to 250, mm -hmm. super straight. Um, so the pig went out to about three or 280, not 380. Oh, man, that would be nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, so about 280, I could throw a pig. Uh, felon, I can get anywhere from 300 to 350 mm -hmm. pretty comfortably and do both. Um, at about three thirty, I start getting dicey, uh, like it keep 1000. I threw a, I tried to throw my felon twice, uh, my straight felon twice, mm -hmm. three thirty, and both times it got a little straighter than I was anticipating it to do. Um, so that's going to come with time as well. But, uh, so there's these like 20 foot gaps mm -hmm. and the justice serves that gap really well for me. Like if I really want to yam into something, I can give it 300 feet of power and know that it's going to fade at 280 kind of mm -hmm. a deal. Um, but the, the big thing that the justice I found was I tried the zone OS as a replacement. Um, I tried the a two, the a two is very close to the justice. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think there was one other disc that I threw in there, uh, for a little bit. Uh, the, Oh, uh, terminal velocity Ursus. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried that one as well. Um, and the justice for me, there's just a couple holes in town and it's like, it's not just one particular course. It's this same flex forehand shot downhill mm -hmm. that for some reason I hit really well with a justice 
and everything else, I feel like I have to throw so hard on Anheuser that I end up blasting past the hole. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be very similar. If you think about hole four at Timbrook, Mm -hmm. that downhill, instead of going right at it, just being able to just throw a slight flex Mm -hmm. of something overstable and let it just chop through that fairway. That is the shot that I use the justice for more than anything, or like I'm in the woods and I have to flex around because pigs do not like to come out of Anheuser once they're in it, Mm -hmm. even the most overstable ones. Yeah. So I'm cycling through an overstable pig because I throw them so much and I rely on with a power forehand like I have, I need those things to be fading. Yeah. Like I need it to happen. M- call me Mr. Pig uh, is a purple pig in my bag and I mm-hmm. call it straight pig because um, that's what that slot is. And I know that if I throw a straight pig on a forehand trying to get it to go 280 feet, it's not going to fade. Mm-hmm. But I'm okay with that because I have another pig that fades, but the problem with base plastic pigs is I have not had one last for more than three months because of how often I throw my pigs. Mm -hmm. So that's why I ended up cycling. So if you think about that, I have 60 pigs in my collection, but I burn through at least four a year just in that overstable slot alone. Right. Yeah. And then you have your other two shifting out as well. Yeah. Which does make the cycling very easy Mm -hmm. because I have just two boxes of pigs. There's a bunch of freshies and then there's a bunch of like, oh, these are too straight for me. These are waiting to serve straight pig slot. But those are the ones that I end up actually giving away a lot because for some people, they don't like the pig because it's so overstable Mm -hmm. out of the box. Right. But if I give them straight pig, they're not going to throw it as much as I do. And it actually flies like an overstable approach just mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Um, yeah. So the justice definitely serves that role for me, but I also am totally cool with backing down a felon. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, to serve that slot as well. So, uh, the real question mark slot for me is we get to the fairways right? and Brad, let's talk about stinks because you know that your boy loves the stink i've heard i've heard that a few times and i mean if you play with me you'll see that sting fly uh Mm -hmm. i the amount of times that at new london i've pulled that purple i have a purple z sting and i describe it to the boys as like every time we're on hole six i can see it so clearly we're (laughs) around the corner we're playing imposter we're playing worst shot we're playing whatever and I always end up with a fairway shot on hole six. That's true. And I grab that sting and they're like, Robbie, that's going to turn over. And I'm like, it's not. Mm-hmm. I promise it's not. I'm going to throw it on so much hyzer and it's going to be fine. And they're like, yeah, okay, okay, we'll see. And what does it do? Stands up, rides straight, and it drops. That's the beauty. Now, my ESP stings. Trouble. Because they Flippy. will stand all the way up and mm-hmm. turn pretty comfortably. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, stings, I also give away a lot because for a while you couldn't grab ESP stings anywhere. Yeah. And thankfully they ran them and I have a surplus of them. I feel really good. Yeah. And they, they've gone back to not running them. So just a heads up. And that is, Brad and I had a conversation and that inspired literally this whole episode because Mm -hmm. discs that I thought I was super excited to have and bag suddenly discraft aside, like discraft had a stranglehold on my fairways and Brad, there's a very real world that almost all of them are leaving (laughs) because of these ships. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I think discraft's trying to do some new things. They're bringing, you know, they brought in the cicada um, and various plastics and stuff this year. Obviously, the Passion's very successful, very good mover for the, that disc. So some of these other molds, like the Stalker, like the Machete, like the Wasp, you know, may or may not be, you know, at least in Z plastic, we're not going to see them around much longer, I don't think. So we don't want to be back to into, into a corner. Yeah. And and, yeah. and I bag two to be discontinued discs. I bag a Z Stalker and an ESP Stink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so 
Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if they're going to run the ESP Sting anymore. They just don't run it very often if they do. And yeah, the stalkers are, the Z ones are, I think are in trouble, Robbie. So yeah, we need to figure out, um, I think, we, you know, we talked about the Felon. That's your overstable. That's your like go-to power forehand disc. But really we have these interesting, like kind of, they're not in a clump. They're like definitely spaced out where they need to be. You have like your Stings on like the slightly understable side. And you said your ESP one's like even a little more understable. Your Passion, just a good hyzer flip disc for you. Yeah. Yeah, like especially these ESP passions. So mm -hmm. I've got the 100K passion uh, from Foundation, same exact flight. The Robbie C passion is what I have in my bag. Uh, and then uh, the Connor box had the Break 86 passions. Mm -hmm. Like all of that run of ESP passions, I feel like it's super easy to find mm -hmm. and they fly beautifully. It's that hyzer flip, they go really straight. The the thing about that is, is I, I have like started to see that I'm using that as like a pseudo distance driver, more control driver type vibe mm -hmm. instead of like a pure fairway because I just get so much more distance out of the passion than I do a stalker right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's very, very fascinating to me. Um, I, I think because of the power shifts that I'm having, um, one of the big things that I'm seeing is like, you have to, I have to trust that my swing is working mm -hmm. and know that if I, if I handicap, not handicap, if I give myself the crutch of having super flippy stuff mm -hmm. when I hit it, it's going to do what that origin did. Um, and it's just going to stand all the way up and turn. Right. So I can't bank on having super, super flippy stuff mm -hmm. to help me with that. And I'm going to have to, I will commit more knowing that I have a little more overstable stuff in there because if I don't commit, she's just not going to fly. Like it's right. not going to work. So I wanted to adjust this. So I think there's a world that the Z sting, that purple one has flown so well for me until the other day, last Saturday where I played, it is a 400 and like 90 foot par four. And it bends slightly left or right to left the whole way. Mm hmm. I throw my Z stink on hyzer. It stands up and it rides straight. And then it usually settles around that 325 area. I have an easy pitch in, take your three, walk away. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. This thing, Brad stands all the way up, rides straight and then turns really? for the last like 30% of the flight. And I looked at my card and was like, uh Oh Yeah. That's, That's the good. ESP Sting's worst nightmare mm -hmm. because the Z Sting has now flown like the ESP. Mm -hmm. So I think the ESP is coming out, which is nice because I am going to give away a lot of them. Uh, I'm going to just keep a box of them on my person. Mm -hmm. uh, and when people are like, I'm looking for this, uh, I'm not just going to like if you walk up and you're like, hey, can I have an ESP Sting? That's not going to be the way. But if we're just talking about the need for a disc. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bless some people with some ESP stinks because I can Great see disc. that. Um, the Z stalk. Now the stalker is the most questionable part of this. Mm -hmm. Because Brad, what I need you to give me is honest therapy. In am I going to try to push mold minimalization too far in this process? Because I love the ESP stalker. Mm -hmm. That disc is incredible. And I could see a world that an ESP stalker eventually, because I've seen Trevor do it with the Z stalker. I can see a world where the ESP stalker turns into what that Z sting is doing. Mm -hmm. It's true. But I wouldn't even be as afraid for the stalker to turn all the way over because the stalker has some stability inside of it naturally, mm -hmm. which could be really nice. And if that happens, I could just like think about where on my chart, I have two stings sitting right of the neutral line. Mm -hmm. 
is there a world where the ESP sting leaves, Z sting flips flips one slot over into the mm-hmm. understable side. ESP stalker currently does fly now like that Z sting was. Mm-hmm. Hit it hard, it stands up, it rides straight, just settles. So I think that's already happened. Is there a world that instead of putting another new ESP stalker in there right now, I just let that one continue to beat in. And then I just put a brand new mold where the stalkers are currently. Mm -hmm. And I put two in there. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Just based on the rest of your bag, I mean, obviously your pigs and wizards are pretty minimalized right but it seems like you're having a lot of success and comfortability with your mid ranges and there's no i mean other than the reactors everything else is like different yeah. um i think it come, maybe comes back to our discussion earlier of like are you wanting are you looking for the flight or are you looking for just discs right like that's yeah. kind of that's kind of where we're at yeah i think there's a i think there's a great disc that you don't throw or haven't thrown that i think would be awesome in that slot especially if the passion for you is more like a control driver and we're just even just going to bump it up like in the felon category almost in like that nine speed because you're kind of throwing it like a nine speed or 10 yeah, speed for sure so really all we're dealing with in that seven speed like true fairway category is like your stings like you said are a little right of neutral they're in that understable category and then your stalkers yeah i think you have I, a whole world to play with on the le- left side the more stable to overstable yeah. side the like 7502 and Mm -hmm. i'll tell you there are there are three options that i thought of here Mm -hmm. and i think you've tried all three of them if there there are two of what you're going to say i probably bagged two of them but yeah so the one of them is the eagle i always go back Mm -hmm. to the eagle i love the eagle i think the eagle is probably one of my biggest crush discs Mm mm-hmm not in terms of I crush it, but I have yeah. a crush on the Eagle. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I always want the Eagle to be amazing. And then I, it's because I'm such a Calvin Heiberg fan. Right. I want to be Vinny. Uh, and so I want to just, I want to be just ripping these Eagles. Like right. Ezra talking about it on Brody's practice round of like, oh, everyone's throwing a forehand here. Yeah. Calvin will probably throw a, throw an Eagle. That's and fair. he did. Uh, he did multiple rounds. Mm-hmm. So uh, the Eagle is that option, but I'm like, eliminating that and this is where it's like if i'm going to mold minimalize one of these other two i don't see that much of a difference in flight Mm -hmm. and it's the frio okay because the frio i really like i like the hand feel of it i like how the bravo plastic feels flies really great it does not fly like the numbers suggest Mm mm-hmm because the numbers, I think, call it a 7.5 minus 1.1. One, one. No way, Jose. It's definitely got more stability than that is. Mm-hmm. Similar to how the Stalker does not have the stability that the numbers say it does. Mm-hmm. The you. Frio is like the opposite side. Mm-hmm. So the Frio would be like, I could put a Frio in there. And then have another slot available because there's no point in putting two Frios in there Mm -hmm. because they're going to fly the exact same. Um, And plastic, I don't personally, the Lone Star guys, the Ranger team come to the rescue here, all of you. Does the Alpha and the Bravo really fly that different in the Frio? Because I don't think it does. Uh, Mm -hmm. And the Charlie, I'm pretty sure you can only get Charlie Frios if you're like actually on the team. Uh, So, or Founders Frios. I don't know what Charlie is. Anyways, uh, besides his chocolate factory. Mm-hmm. The third option is probably the one that is in your bag, the evader. Yep. That immediately, that was what I was thinking. I feel like for you, it's like such a, it's like the felon's little brother. And I feel like it would be a really nice compliment. And thinking about how many hundreds of thousands of plastic varieties you could get in that. Um, again, yeah. maybe not minimalizing in the sense of like, you're taking an existing mold that's in there and you're minimalizing that. But I think, the evader might give you a lot of options on the other side to kind of minimalize. Um, 
so I, I like the Evader choice. I've I've fallen in love with the Evader. I think it's a great, great disc. It, I I just feel like I can throw it so far, and it has like that nice like straight flight, and then the last forty percent just like a pushing gentle hyzer out, out of it, and I love it. Um, the other mold I was going to suggest, which seems like maybe not the option for you, but it's a very specific option. So it's like very anti mold minimalization. Oh. But Okay. I think you need a C line green FD is what I think you okay. need. Okay. Because that and I and Discmania plastic experts, please let me know. I believe it's the green and maybe the red or purple. I can't remember, but there's a couple colors that are way more overstable than they would you would believe. Mm. Um and I also don't think there's anything wrong with I mean, you might and I, I don't know with as much as you play and if you were throwing it a lot you may have to it may be a pig situation where you're cycling often i do s- seem to think that the sea line plastic tends to hold up pretty well yeah but um i don't think there's anything wrong again the passion is getting kicked up in kind of like the control driver category i don't think there's anything wrong with a disc you can trust to like hyzer flip and carry straight but have like decent fade at the end to kind of like complement what your stalker is like where it's like flip up it's not going to turn it's just going to go straight and settle yeah you know and again your arm is very different than mine so that it would maybe take some experimenting but i think specifically like a green or one of the more overstable colors of the fd might be an interesting play for you and maybe okay. that maybe it's a vader and that maybe you just like bulk out that fairway category yeah i i'll tell you here's my and this is this is content creator Robbie coming out in terms of uh, I have to hold true to my my morals and my values, right? right? And I don't. This is something that I know that I care about, maybe unnecessarily, but mm-hmm. I still like it's it is a passion uh, of mine. Uh, is because I am unsponsored by all of these companies or not mm-hmm. sponsored by all of these companies, it's very tough for me to be like, Oh, let one company start slowly overtaking it. Right. Mm-hmm. So I look at this and I'm like, all right, I got three pigs, a polecat, a Rolo. And that's all the Innova that I have in my bag. Mm-hmm. Okay. So five of, uh, the mouse is not working. There she is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times four is 24. I got 25 discs in my bag. So five mm-hmm. of 25, 25% of it, or 20% of it is uh, Innova. Innova. I'm fine with that, especially because it's pigs and polecats. Like, uh, yeah. and the Rolo, we've already talked about, not long mm-hmm. for this world. Uh, Wizards. Honestly, love Gateway. Very excited. Uh, trying to work with them for the year. I'm okay with multiple wizards being in there. That's cool. And two of them are putting putters. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have MVP. Honestly, a really small presence in my back. It's yeah. just the reactors. Right. That's actually a little crazy. Uh, yeah, I, for sure. But... I do think that that is a weak part of their lineup like that. Cause you, it's like you have the crave and then you jump to the vault. Yeah. And I am not a big, I, I like recommending the crave, the crave and I do not get along. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just, I don't know what it is about the crave. I know a lot of people rave about the crave. Sorry, brothers uh, and Mm -hmm. sisters. Great disc for everybody else. Just, Mm-hmm. I can't, I don't know why. Uh, Dismania, Origin, probably soon to be a second Origin, because I would mm-hmm. imagine the Rolo will kick out, Origin will shift over, and then a mm-hmm. brand new Origin will slap in. Like, yeah. done. Um, But Trilogy... Nine. Trilogy's taken over. Yeah, so you can't put the Evader in there. Justice, two felons, and then six trilogy drivers. Yeah, that's tough. Tough. Look. Like, and that's, that's where chat and like commenters, I just want you to know, I understand that I'm being silly. Like I get it, but also there's someone out there who makes a lot of content 
and they're trying. They're trying so hard. And they're on Team Trilogy right now, which is a fan-based group. Mm -hmm. And they're getting the empty promise over and over again of if you just stick with us, eventually we might move you up to one of the dynamic trilogy or like one of the dynamic lat or West side team. Mm -hmm. And they're working their butt off. And trilogy's looking at me saying, well, Robbie is just showcasing these discs and we're not paying him a dime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a tough look, tough look. And it's like, I'm not trying to be so narcissistic that like, I'm that important. I really am trying to view it from the standpoint of like, I don't, I want you as a content creator for trilogy to be able to approach you, you and all 400 subscribers you have for them to be able to approach you. And you'd be like, Hey, can I get free plastic? And that's great for you right now. Mm -hmm. I want to open those doors. So that's where the evader and I struggle. Yeah. So another option that I didn't consider because I realized if I pull the stalkers and a sting out, Discraft goes from having a nice presence to like, they're gone. Uh, yeah, right. What about the Athena? Because I feel like you've thrown the Athena way more than I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's basically that same slot. It comes down to, I and mean, I just liked the Evader more. I like the hand feel of it a little bit more than I do the Athena. But yeah, that's actually a great choice. I completely forgot about that. Um Another one. Here's a random one. How about the Vila from Millennium? I I have considered that as well because then I'm like, not only am I keeping my Vinny vibes alive, it's I'm like new. actually holding a Vinny disc. Yeah, and that's a whole new vibe. And again, it's just it's described as like kind of a beat and eagle, right? Like yeah. a slightly beat. I mean, that might not be a bad choice at all. Yeah. Huh. Options to consider. So this is where chat, I would love your input uh, for you guys to look and go, okay, here's what we're thinking. Here's some ideas. Uh, if you were filling this slot, what are you going with? And looking at, I've got two stings, two stalkers. And here's the thing is the Z stalkers in there right now. And I love the Z stalker. I think it's phenomenal but it's going to be discontinued. So there will be a finite amount of them. And honestly, in the last few months, I don't know why, maybe I'm like taking riskier lines than I need to, but I've lost more Z stalkers than any other mold mm -hmm. besides meteors. Right. Meteors are in a bad place for me right now because I cannot keep a meteor in my bag for more than a round. Mm -hmm. uh, that is tough. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, yeah. like, uh, but Z stalkers, I've lost two Z stalkers in the last few months. And like, I, the last one that I physically own is currently in my bag. Uh, and so I think it's just time to look at some alternatives, especially if they're not going to be available. Mm -hmm. I like being able to throw stuff that's available, not only because I want to be able to throw it. But I have a really hard time if I play with you during a round or I'm showing it in a video and then you're like, wow, that is kind of cool. Oh, yeah, no, this is it's it's a prodigy situation. It's the Bowling Green D3s like mm -hmm. I want to be able to throw stuff that y'all are looking at and going, yeah, I could go get that. Uh, yeah. And that's that's kind of where I am, too, because I took the that end of a made FD out of my bag for the sake of like, I don't want to get attached to that thing and not be able to throw it. There's like, there's obviously some like fun stuff in my bag, but nothing is like so out of the ordinary that anyone couldn't find it pretty easily. You know what I mean? Minus like the Eagle Envy, right? That's new, but they're going to make more of those. Like it's not going to be Sexton Firebird. They make more of those, whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm that way too. I'm not, I love having cool stamps or unique dies, that sort of thing, but I don't want to get attached to a disc that I can't find or it's going to cost me like 80 bucks a pop. Then I'm just not going to have fun playing. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think, and also in the comments, help us out again, Discmania folks on the sea line plastic, which is the most, yeah. the collar's more overstable. Cause what I really want to see Robbie C do is throw some FDs as a guy who carries a lot of FDs in his bag and loves the FD. Yeah. Um, I, I really want to see that Robbie. 
though. And hey, and I, maybe, might, I might even have a few to send you. Just, just saying. I was saying, maybe that's a video I end up doing is I end up doing the, it would be the FD versus the Athena versus the Vela. Uh, yeah, I think those three, three different companies, um, because if I were to if I were to say where I like where I likely will settle the bag like when I leave this this episode mm-hmm. is that ESP Sting's gonna come out, Z Sting's gonna shift over, ESP Stalker's gonna stay in. I'll probably get another new ESP stalker that I have mm-hmm. and put it in. And then either in that Z stalker spot put a uh Let's see, because I'm going to have two slots available. No, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So a new stalker in and the current ESP stalker slot and then an Athena or a Vela or an FD. One of those three is going in mm-hmm. that slot because I think that's the best way to do it right now is I'm familiar with an ESP stalker. I know what a brand new one does. So right. I have that opportunity and then just letting the Z like whatever that one is shine on its own and then mm-hmm. see how it seasons to see if it pushes the other out, the other stalker out. Oh, last minute contention, the cookie cookie could be it as well. I will say that I, while I love the idea of the rounded rims, they feel really cool. I don't know why I struggle with nose angle on the rounded rims hmm. more than okay. anything else, because like, I really wanted the soda. I got this Diet Coke soda mm-hmm. behind me that uh, Rick Peavy died for me. It's amazing. And I didn't want it to be a wall hanger, but it's an understable disc. And because I cannot get the nose down on it, it just doesn't fly like a soda at mm-hmm. all. Yeah. Um, so I, but the clash, I like some clash plastic. I like some clash plastic. Uh, so just, I just an option. Yeah, I you know I'll throw I'll throw the cookie in the mix in this mm-hmm. video force. Uh, it'll be like a maybe it's like nine holes, and mm-hmm. for the first three holes or like the first four holes, two are like it's like a head to head like a bracket. Deal. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That sounds fun. Yeah, and hey, I think we also next time you're Lynchburg, you and I should do a bag swap video. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I just watch you kill it with my bag and just you know just clone it over. Hey, come on. Come on. I'm here for it. Well, y'all, this has been a funky episode for sure. Uh, And we've talked about a lot of plastic. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this rant uh, because it it felt a little ranty at times, but also like just insight into not only like how I'm trying to build my bag and attack my bag, but there's Mm -hmm. the, I mean, that whole five to 10 minute conversation on like just brands uh and over selling to one brand or another is something that i i very much focus on uh whether that's good or bad i don't know like truly i don't know in my mind it's good because i i truly am trying to help the content creator space Mm -hmm. that's my dream uh and that's a mark that i want to help in disc golf with uh because I would love to see more people people be able to do what I get to do for a living right? in the creator space. So I got to protect my people. Um, but we did talk about a lot of plastic, but I'm sure we haven't talked about everything that's new in the warehouse, Brad. Yeah. So this week um, we have uh, a full elevation disc restock. If that's, if that's your jam, they did release um, the Koi and glow plastic um, let's see the interceptor and in glow. We have a restock of some of like the gecko and the arowana and both glow and uh, regular, uh, OG. We also have, um, their new disc, which is called the psychic overstable. Oh fairway, yeah. The driver. Or, yeah. Or is it a fairway? It's a distance, I think. Um, Come on. yeah. So, Hey, I've seen you elevation folks out there, tear it up. If, if that's your thing, then we got a lot of stuff there for you. So check out all that. I'll, a lot of cool new collars. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. It all. Uh, this is Thursday, released on Thursday, but I'm sure there'll still be some around for Friday. So make sure you check it out. Uh, let's see, Discmania released some cool stuff. The Cosmic Fury Two came out this week. We also had uh, the 10 year anniversary FD Three that came out. Yeah, and a Metal Flake. Gl- I think it's Glow um, DD also came out this week. 
So very cool, interesting plastic from Discmania this week. Um, we're putting up a full DGA restock as we speak. Uh, it may all be up by Friday. If not, it's going to keep going up over the next few days. But all the DGA molds you know and love, the sale, the quake, um, the steady. I mean, we have all kinds of like, literally every one of their molds we have going up this week. Um, just want to make sure that's available to you. Team DGA has some sneaky heat for like younger players this year. So I, sure I, look, I look for them to do very well as a brand this year. Uh, pipeline. So, oh, pipeline. Yeah, that's about to be my new favorite mold. Hey, that is, yeah, for you too. I, <sighs> See, that, that 7502 slot, there's a ton of good stuff. I mean, so many options. Um, so, and I'll be having that in my bag for the bag challenge, which stay tuned. That may be happening here in the coming weeks. So just yeah. keep that. Um, so yeah, we have DGA restock going up. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, oh, big one that's going up. Robbie, you may have a little something to do with this. We've got a restock of some Robbie C pigs up oink, in the oink. store. Yeah. Something we're going to try to have in stock often for you guys. You guys love them. They get sold out constantly, which is great. Thank you for that support. But hey, make sure you check out those. If you're a Robbie C fan, if you're a pig fan, then... Yep, I it was I, I was blown away, y'all, by the number of people who came up at the expo and were like, oh, do you have any pigs available? Do you have any pigs available? I'm so grateful that there are pig farmers out there mm -hmm. uh, continuing to grow and continuing to shine. And we literally like we have Birdie Fam Takes Over Birmingham happening next week. And we talked about it and we were like, really, I think the last time that we ran Robbie C. Pigs was like right after I signed with Foundation. Mm -hmm. And we just not had them since uh, the sub box. But like the sub box was an uh, exclusive year. thing. So yeah. Uh, yeah, Robbie C. Pigs available and there's a small batch of them. So yeah, make sure you get them soon. Um, also, speaking of subscription box, we have, oh, this will be, never mind. This is going to be We're airing in March. In March. But hey, there'll be some open in March. Um, the February box, for those of you who got it, was complete, as the kids say, fire. And it was it was awesome. You get four discs. They're all custom. But hey, it was a celebration. It was a five-year anniversary box. This next month, so March, our subscription box, we're going back to a, a theme. I'll, I'll spoil the theme. Ooh, ooh. Exclusive ooh. here. It's going to be the fieldwork box. Mm. And it's going to be focused on discs that are great for its springtime. Get back out in the, the field. Do some work. Do some form work. All of these discs are going to be designed specifically for you to do that. And again, spoiler, there there will be a custom disc. That's never guaranteed, but we're pretty much doing it every time now. So we're going to have a custom stamp disc in that and a couple other discs to help you with that form work and a swag item, which I cannot spoil. Ooh. It is unlike any of that we've ever done. I'll just say that. That's, mm. that's a good hint. Mm. Um, and we're working with another company on it. So I'm going to tell mm. Robbie after this podcast because I don't think he even knows. Mm, it's a um, million dollars yeah uh, <laughs> yeah it's just yeah it's it's money the company it, is the federal reserve <laughs> yeah it is and you know now there's a million there may be shards of dollar bills you have to collect them all and put them together right so don't come at us federal government we do not tamper with currency yeah we don't we don't shred currency no, no. It's, 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 stop listening yeah so uh well so let's wrap it up i hear an fbi agent at the door robbie but you know hey uh, if it's good, keep it out of the FBI's hands and uh, keep it in the bag. We'll see you all we'll next week. <laughs>